Hello and welcome. In today's video, we'll be having a look at how we can build simple animations to review our construction progress inside of our reports. It's super simple and we're going to be using a couple different tools. Uh, of course, VCAD and also another custom visual called Play Axis. Before we get into all of that though, we first need to review our data. So we're going to be importing inside of our report uh, some data containing our completion dates. Uh, specifically, in this case, we're going to be using a CSV file because we want to keep the solution as generic as possible. Uh, but any other file format would have worked. Uh, even if you're using something like Synchro or MS Project, uh, that would also go. So let's go ahead and let's load our completion CSV. And let's uh, have a quick look. So here it is. So all we simply need is a column with a completion date telling us which date an, an item was built on and the external ID to identify that item. Let's go ahead and load it. Now in this case uh, we are using a Revit model so the external ID is the optimal solution. Uh, in other cases we could have also used a specific custom property maybe that was defined in our BIM file. Uh, just something that would allow us to identify the items in the report as well uh, as in the model. So now we've loaded in the data set. Let's have a look at the relationships. Make sure that, okay, Power BI already loaded it in. So, uh, I mean, already created a relationship. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So uh, it looks like it connected the completion dates with the asset uh, table, which is perfect using the external ID, which is exactly what we wanted. So we're good to go. Let's switch back to report and let's start playing around with this data. Uh, for starters, let's try and add it to our asset list over here. So we can go ahead and we can remove the family and the symbol. Let's keep the category just as some information. And then from our completion uh, data set, we're going to add our completion date. Uh, let's not have the hierarchy. I want the whole date. Uh, and probably while we're at it, we want to change the format of the date up here. We can say I want a short date. There we go. That'll make it a little easier uh, to read. So first thing we notice is not every item has a completion date. This is perfectly normal. Uh, I don't have the completion information for every single item in my model. Uh, however, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So we probably want to start filtering, filtering out this data. Let's go ahead and let's remove the property list. Uh, and let's stretch down a bit here the asset. There we go, leave some, some room up top. Uh, and here we're going to go ahead and add in a slicer. Okay, in my slicer, I'm going to bind my completion date. And Power BI realized it's a date, so it's giving me a between uh, slicer. So if we filter it out, and let's hide what we're not looking at, uh, we can see over here, so we're basically reviewing uh, the uh, items that were constructed in a certain um, time frame. And if we stretch out the time frame, we can see uh, items get added to the model, uh, basically showing us what has been added over time. So this is sort of the, the final result we want. We want something that uh, automatically goes through the various dates and shows us what has been constructed up to a certain date. To do that, we're going to be using the play axis like I was talking about before. So let's go ahead and let's um, add that custom visual. I'm simply going to come over here to the three dots and tell it I want to get more visuals. And we can get it directly from the Power BI visual uh, shop over here. So we're going to look for the play axis. There we go. By Ambrosil. I believe that's how the uh, name is pronounced. Uh, if not, apologies. But this is a, a very cool um, custom visual. It allows us to iterate over our data automatically. So let's give a, go ahead and add it to our report and have a look at how it functions. So the import was successful. We can see it down here. Let's go ahead and let's actually remove this um, slicer we had. And let's drop in our play axis. Uh, sort of in the same place and here for the data bindings we're going to again use our completion date remember not the hierarchy I want the whole date there we go uh, it does also have some formatting options 
for more graphical aspects, but we're not going to get into those right now. So what we can do is um, if we simply try and play the animation, uh, we can have a look and we can see it, the play axis is going through our dates as we can see down here. However, uh, instead of sort of adding to the to the dates, uh, it's simply going through the dates. And so we're seeing only the items constructed on any given date, which isn't exactly what we wanted. Luckily, there's a simple uh, workaround that we can use. So let's go ahead and let's stop this animation. And if we think about what we actually want, so what the play animation is, uh, play axis is now doing is it's going through the dates and for each date it's, uh, if we go ahead and we stop it real quick, so for each date it's giving me the objects for that specific date. What I instead would like is for it to go through the dates and for each date give me the objects for that specific date and for any previous dates as well. Fairly simple to do by using Power Query. So let's go ahead and over here transform data. We're going to go open up the Power Query editor. And here what we want to do is we want to uh, get our completion. Uh, let's make this a little smaller. So we're going to get our completion table and we're going to go ahead and duplicate it. So let's duplicate this data set and rename it. So instead of a completion data set, what I'm going to have here is my animation dates. So let's go ahead and call it like this. Animation dates. Okay. And so here, let's start from those animation dates. So let's go ahead and let's remove the external ID. Uh, and let's also remove any possible duplicates that I have in my completion date. Because as we saw on some days, uh, multiple objects were created, so here I would have some duplication. So let's go ahead and remove the duplicates. And so now what we have is a list of dates. Uh, perfect. Now, what I was saying is we want to add to these days, and for each day I want to have a list of all the objects for that specific day. Now what I could easily do is add a list of all the objects and then filter it down. To do so, we're going to go over to add column and we're going to add a custom column. This is going to be my completion data. And here I'm simply going to add a reference to my completion table. So I'm going to tell it I want to have my completion uh, table. Let's go ahead and press OK. And then if we have a look over here, we can see for each row, I actually have all the rows of my completion uh, data set as well, which is exactly what we want. Now we can expand the table. Okay. Uh, and at this point, what we can see for each completion date here, the 18th, we have every single day. However, we don't want every single day. We only want the days that are on a specific date or previous. Simple enough. Let's add another custom column. Uh, let's call it just like this. Let's call it is on or previous. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to check is my completion date uh, previous or equals to my uh, well, this first date, which we're going to probably rename in a moment. Let's go ahead and press OK. And so now we can see I have a column with true false values. And if we scroll down a bit, here we go. So we can see the table is now telling me true. So 15th is uh, lower or equals to the 18th of February. Uh, if we go down a bit, the 16th of March instead comes after the 18th of February, of course. And so we have this filter, I'm sorry, this column, which we can easily filter. So let's only keep the true values. And so now we only have couples of dates where the completion date, which I would call animation date, 
is um, smaller or equals to the animation date. Let's go ahead and rename this to completion date as well. This can be simply external ID. And well, is on, on or previous, we don't actually need this column right now, but let's just keep it for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and simply close and apply our transformations. Now, before we do anything else, we want to have a look at the relationships, make sure that everything is connected correctly. So let's have a look at our new table, drag it over a bit. Okay, and over here we can see that it has been connected to the VCAT asset table, which is what we want, uh, through the external ID, which again is what we want. However, it is uh, 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 one directional. So to change that, we're going to simply come over here to the cross filter direction and say it needs to be both and then apply the changes. Okay, and now the animation date data set will be able to filter the assets as well. Okay, let's go back to our report. Uh, now, of course, we want to use our new data set. So in our completion uh, uh, animation here, instead of using the completion date, we're going to remove this and we're going to use our animation date, which is the uh, new date we've created. Again, not the hierarchy. There we go. Uh, and now if we go through the animation, we can see we are adding to the assets. So I have not only the exact date, but also everything previous. If we want a little more information about that, uh, we can add a card down here, uh, which can count the number of assets that are being shown. There we go. And we can see it's always adding to that list. And of course, we are free to explore the model however we like inside of the VCAT custom visual as the items are being added to the rendering. Okay, this has been a quick look at how you can create simple animations to monitor construction progress using VCAT and this time using also the play axis. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos to come.